what made you choose Algorand over some of the other behemoths at the time, like the Ethereum, Solanas, and like? Yeah. Um, so I think I think it was Steve Jobs who said this the best. It's like when you build something new, you can't be thinking about it from the point of technology and then say, well, I'm going to build this. And then would you, our users like it? And like, would they use it? Right. You have to think about it from the reverse side, which is what do the users want? And kind of like how I talked about earlier, it, it became very apparent that um, most of the people that we spoke to wanted to invest in real estate, but it was too expensive for them. And the process was just too annoying. And so even some of the people that did have the money just ended up not doing that because their alternative is they could go on Robinhood or Coinbase and deploy a similar amount of capital in under five minutes and not have to deal with that process, right? Yep. Um, and contrary to popular belief, a lot of people actually don't want real estate exposure, right? So what I mean by that is, you know, people are smart enough to know that REITs exist and you could just put some money into a REIT and just passively earn income and, and call it a day, right? So that instrument has been available for a very, very long time. But if you look at the overall market, um, just single family rental properties alone uh, in the US is something like $1.5 trillion in terms of transactional volume on an annual basis. And a lot of people don't realize, but roughly like only about 30 ish percent of that is actually from institutional activity. So like large funds, uh, reads and, and, you know, um, open door, things like that, that you, you hear in the news, the remaining, actually the bulk of the volume comes from small mom and pop real estate investors, like couples that own uh, a house near a university and they rent it out as student housing, things like that. They represent about 70% of the transactional volume. And so these people all know what a read is. So you have to ask yourself, like, why is it that despite there being this like read thing that exists and they could just do that, why so much money and like 70% of that market um, don't participate in it? So when we spoke to our users, it became pretty apparent that what they actually want is control. Like they don't just want to give someone money and just call it the day. It's like, oh, well, I know that money has exposure to real estate and they bought some real estate with it. What people really care about is, you know, they drive around town, they drive around the city and they go like, oh, I really like this neighborhood. I think it'll do really well. Like, I really like that house in this neighborhood. I would like to buy that house, right? That's what people actually want. That sort of specific control over what they add into their portfolio and how they manage it. And so uh, we knew from the get go in order to give people that control and what they actually want, uh, you would need a um, you would need a very robust sort of governance program um, where people who actually own the properties are in fact the owners and they control and manage it themselves. Um, and it's also important that you know they own the assets and those assets are there forever and they they own it forever until they choose to sell it. And so we wanted to find a blockchain that couldn't really soft fork, if that makes any sense. And so Algorand kind of fit that really well. And we were very fortunate in that, um, you know, a lot of our, like, so one of our main uh, engineers who's been with us for, for quite some time now, we didn't know this. We didn't hire him originally for blockchain development, but it turns mm -hmm. out um, when we got into this space that he was like, oh, I actually was one of the uh, contributors to the first open source Bitcoin wallet, like way back in the day, it's like 20, 2013 or something like that. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. And so he's better. apparently just on the side been keeping up with the, the industry developments and new chains and new technology that have come out. And he was a person that recommended Algorand because if it, you know, I listed out a couple of criteria for our team and said, look, whatever we choose to build on has to be able to satisfy these things. And, you know, we, I talk about the governance and the forking aspect. And then the other aspect is uh, transaction fees, right? It doesn't make sense to, you know, for our use case, for someone who's, you know, collecting a dollar in rent for that to cost like $5 to send to them. Yeah, it literally would be like impossible that, in my exactly. mind to use Ethereum because even then you're thinking if you got to buy a $50 token or you're putting $50 or even more, God forbid, like imagine having to pay, you know, $15 of that or $10 of that in a fee. I mean, at that point, you literally would have to hold that property for X amount of time to even, you know, for it to pay off for you. So yeah, yeah it that, definitely that's, that's, that's definitely one of the drawbacks, the high fees. But the most important one I would actually say is, you know, I, I told our team that if you want this to do well, uh, you're going to need 
just people who don't understand blockchain it uses like the blockchain mm, is yep. just the plumbing it's it's like a data it, it's basically the settlement layer on lofty that's it that's all all there is to it and you know for most of our users they're not going to understand what it is they're not going to know what it is um and they need to have a good experience using the platform they can't be scared they can't have too many questions about it um and so one of the things we wanted to mimic was what people were already used to which is when you go on Robinhood or any other sort of legacy web two traditional uh, finance apps, when you click buttons, they, you know, things go through pretty quickly with the databases, yeah. right? And so people are just like, hey, I'm buying this thing. I click on it. Okay. It says I bought it. It's in my account. That took like two seconds. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things was transaction uh, and settlement time, right? We played around with a lot of different blockchains, just sending funds back and forth. And it's just like, okay, I sent it. And then you just sit there and it's like, okay, estimated yeah. wait time is like 10 minutes. That's always the scariest part. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's like your yeah. money is out of your wallet, but you don't know if it got to the other side yet. Yeah. And so I was like, this is, this absolutely cannot fly. Like what is something that could mimic a legacy, like web two database experience for people. And we played around with things. And again, Algorand just kind of ticked that, tick that box. And I was like, yeah. okay. If this blockchain, despite it being new and relatively unknown at that point, takes all the boxes, then yeah, then obviously we would want to use it because again, our selling point isn't we're on the blockchain and, and we're using this one specifically. Most of our users don't care and don't know about it in the first place. Um, so for our use case, it was very much of, hey, we need all of these things, which blockchain checks all those boxes and yeah. Algorand ended up being the one.